Welcome. Today we're going to talk about building pages with dynamic data in Zoho Creator. First, we'll go through what we're speaking about when we talk about dynamic pages. One of the biggest pieces of creating that dynamicism within the pages components will be page parameters. So we'll go through those and talk about their use. We'll then go through a demo where we'll build out a working dynamic page that changes based on the information that we enter into it. So what do we mean when we talk about dynamic pages? So pages are a component of Zoho Creator that are pretty underutilized. They have a lot of powerful features that can be applied to them. And one of the biggest is the ability to change the way that they look based on criteria that's been entered in. That different criteria could be search elements that are on the page, uh, user information for who's logged in, as well as navigational attributes, meaning they've clicked on a link and come from a certain page. We can have that new page that they land on look a certain way based on where they're coming from and have different pages show up based on the different links that get them to that same um, spot. That's what we mean by dynamic pages, something that shifts its content based on something that's been entered by the user or based on something that we know about the user, whether that's information about them or about where they're coming from. Here's a quick example. So here we have a search element on a page. As we type in a name of a branch, we're then changing our results based on what we've typed in. We're gonna go through this in a lot more detail and sort of set up something similar within our home appliance app. But I just wanted to give you an example of what we're talking about when we talk about dynamic pages. Page parameters. So one of the biggest pieces of ensuring that the content that we see when we land on a page is the content that we need are page parameters. These are basically additional information that's been appended to the end of the URL to tell the next page what needs to be shown. Here's some examples. You probably see them all the time. Um, here we've got a Twitter search for Elon Musk. Basically, we type that into a search element on Twitter. We then are taken to a page that shows us all of the results based on our query. Another one here, better links. Uh, this is a social campaign for Facebook that is basically being appended to the URL to tell the next page where we came from when we clicked on the link. Lastly, another search query. We're searching for Zoho Creator on DuckDuckGo. And all of that information is being appended as page parameters to that URL to tell the subsequent page exactly what needs to be displayed. Setting up page parameters within Zoho Creator is pretty simple. From the page editor, there is a settings icon up near the top right, uh, near the done button. In here is our page properties. You have background color, uh, you have some built-in buttons as far as being able to print to PDF or print um, you know, to another device. But below all of that is what we're interested in, and that's the parameter section. You can add as many parameters as you need. You would just type in the parameter's name, hit add, and continue filling those out to ensure that you have all of the data that you need when you're passing that query on to that next page. So uses for page parameters. We talked a lot about them. Uh, it can show you, you know, where you've come from. Uh, it can display different data based on who's logged in, based on search criteria that they put in. Uh, it can filter different reports. Um, there's quite a robust set of different features and functionalities that can be added to pages to make them dynamic 
utilizing page parameters. One big thing of note before we hop into the demo, when we're talking about page parameters, these are appended directly to the URL. They are visible within the browser, so encryption is huge. You should never pass any information, personal information or you know anything that could be tied back to the company or whatever it may be through parameters. We offer quite a few different ways that you can encrypt those parameters. And so utilizing those functions within Deluge to create those hidden sort of parameters, the hidden personal information, identifiable information is a huge way to ensure the safety of your data and the safety of the application that you're um, allowing others to access. Uh, so again, we want to stress that you should be encrypting anything with personal information or identifiable information for the company. Let's hop into a quick demo and I'll show you how to build a dynamic page utilizing page parameters and passing them from one page to another. All right, so now we're gonna take all of the information that we just learned about dynamic pages and we're gonna put something together. So let's create a new page. Let's call it customer information and hit create page. All right, so now let's create a title panel just call it Silker Customer Information. Let's make it bold. Let's make text white, background blue, 40. Let's make our margins. Okay, click on this, go to our style, change our background color to blue. Okay, so now we've got a title. Next thing we need to do, we need to put in a page parameter. So let's add a new parameter. Let's say customer and let's add that. So now we have our customer parameter and we're gonna put that here. We then need to add a search bar. So let's just grab one of these and let's change our color to this. All right. Okay. Customer info. So our search result component we're going to choose page. We've done that. Our target page is customer information. Our parameter customer equals our input search string. We're going to open in the same window. And we will say enter customer name. Okay. So now let's close. Now we've got our search piece. So this is the data that we're gonna utilize. So they're gonna be putting in a search for the name and that's gonna give us um, the rest of the data. So we wanna show the name, we wanna show the phone number, the email, and the address. So let's go back over here. And the best way to do this, let's actually design a panel. So let's throw a panel in here. Let's get rid of these elements. Okay, so let's add a heading. This will be our customer name. And I'm just putting in sort of placeholder text. We're gonna change this to deluge, uh, but I thought it'd be good just to have an indication of where our deluge is gonna end up. So we've got our customer name. Let's then add Another heading. Uh, let's get rid of the background on here. 
Let's increase our padding just so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Let's grab another heading too. Oh. Delete that. Oh, come on. Heading two, we want it down here. Change our background to white. Okay. Uh, and then we need one more and we'll say just normal text and let's put it here at the bottom and this will be our address so no background all right so let's change this we'll make this customer phone let's make this customer email and let's make this customer address. All right, <clears throat> so for each of our customers, we want this to show up. So let's go into the configure, let's go to our code, and let's actually just copy this entire panel and close this. So I'm just gonna leave this for the moment, just in case we need to go back to any of it, but we're gonna recreate this panel in our ZML snippet. So let's take this, let's throw it in here, and now we've got all of our information. So what else do we need to put in here? Well, we need to put in our deluge code. So let's go here, let's change this, and we're going to start putting in our information. So let's comment only display results if search is made. Okay. And the way that we set that is we go here to if input dot customer which is our parameter does not equal null because it's a text value then we want all of this to come through Then we need to go down here to our panel. We're going to put in an open deluge, close our if statement, and then close our deluge. So we now have everything set up here. We then go here into our information. We change this to need to add our information here. So this is going to be cost info equals order. And then it's going to be name dot contains input dot customer okay so that should give us our information here then we need to go here and we need to change this to cost info dot name down, copy this, and copy this, and then this is going to be phone, this is going to be email, and this is going to be address. And we can double check here in the refer fields that all of those are correct.
So email, it's actually phone number. And it's shipping address. Okay. So now that gives us all of our information. So the only thing that we've really changed from the snippet that we created So the only thing that we're really changing from the snippet that we created is these values. So everything else, all of our style, all of our um, colors, attributes, all of that is staying the same. We're basically just changing what that information is going to be. So we'll close this. We'll hit done. And then let's access. So customer name. It's actually empty, so let's actually let's make this a little bit easier. Let's go back and let's get rid of this. So delete you. Okay. Access the application. Alright, so now let's say we want to find Goldberg. We can put in Goldberg. We can hit search. And now you see Suki Goldberg comes up. We get her phone, we get her email, we get her address. All right, and say we want to use a different one. Let's say um, Lagan. So let's type in Lagan, search, and now we get Livia Lagan showing up. So just to expose a little bit more, you can see here we actually have our customer equals Lagan, and that's what's driving this. If we search for a different one, let's say Snashel, and search, we then get Snashel here. If we just search for an S, we don't get anything. It's got a match our information. Uh, let's go with Chetum. There you go. All right, so that's how you can create dynamic pages using search elements as well as page parameters and ZML snippets to give you a dynamic page. Thank you. So on this video, we talked about dynamic pages and what we mean when we speak about um, that term. We then went through the basics of page parameters and then a full demo on how to build out a dynamic page using page parameters to affect the data that shows up on the subsequent page. Thank you for your time and I hope you learned something.